Good morning. <laughs> I'd first like to start by saying thank you so much for having me here uh, this weekend and this morning to speak to you about a, a really exciting project that was started out of this congregation. Uh, I, I have a long belated thank you to deliver from both myself and uh, my teammate Michael who went down in 2011 with me. You sent us down there not knowing who we were, two Minnesota boys going down to Guyana and, and I thank you so much for your trust and your resources in us and, and it was a life-changing experience and, and that's what I'm here today to tell you about. Uh, it's working, great. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks to, to Irv Jansen, uh, who I'm staying with this weekend and who has been a longtime mentor. Uh, we, we have weekly phone calls uh, about this project, and, and he's such an inspiration. Uh, I also want to thank Vicki and Steve and Chuck and Nick for all the work that they've done on this project thus far. Um, my favorite message from Luke 15 is is that this, the, the God that is in Luke is, is not a God that is a, a tyrannical and wrathful God, but he's a God of restoration and a God of hope. And these stories as, uh, call us as Christians in some way to seek out those uh, outside of our community and to share our gifts and to share our talents with them. Uh, it is clear why this gospel was selected for World Mission Week. Uh, while I was in school at St. Olaf, I majored in music education. Uh, and, and was surrounded by a lot of, of my friends who were fellow Christians and, and throughout our four years they were called at different times to go serve God uh, internationally and a lot of them were called in really conventional ways of leading Bible studies and uh, approaching non-Christians on college campuses around the world. And I, I never felt comfortable with that. I never felt that that was who I was and, and I, that I could do that genuinely. And I always thought, why is that? What, what is God calling me to do? Um, I was a passionate music educator, uh, dedicated to bring music to the underprivileged and the underrepresented, and I was a Lutheran. But those two things remained separate uh, until I met a man named Irv Jansen. And uh, he came and spoke to one of my music ed classes my senior year, and he gave an hour-long PowerPoint presentation and answered our questions. And at the end of that hour-long class, I said, I want to go to Guyana. Let's do it. And I went up and I introduced myself, and I went back uh, to my room, where my roommate Michael was sleeping at the time. I woke him up and I said, I know what you're doing next year. He said, oh, great, what are we doing? <laughs> and at the time, I was really big in the percentages of saying yes or no. So I said, I'm about 80% yes right now, what are you? And he said, I don't know anything about it, I'm at 60%, which is incredible. By the end of the day, after Googling Guyana, after Googling Fellowship Lutheran Church and reading as much as we could online, we were both at about 99%, uh, which, was, which was incredible. I think we really, that was the first time I'd, I'd truly felt God's call to do something. Um, and, uh, and today I'd like to share with you a little bit about that trip and then a little bit about the project that we started after that. Uh, can you all see? Is this, yeah? Okay. Here we go. Uh, while we were in Guyana, uh, it was in 2011, we stayed for five months. Uh, we, we sent 80 instruments with us that were donated by, by you as well as uh, alum of St. Olaf and, and friends of ours in the Twin Cities. Uh, we lived in, in the two largest cities in Georgetown and New Amsterdam. Uh, we stayed there for two and a half months each teaching music. Uh, when we taught, you can see that's Michael down in the left-hand corner. Uh, we taught over 300 people a week in New Amsterdam, uh, approaching churches and schools, asking who would like to come learn music for free. Uh, and, and we worked with uh, a variety of ages. We, in the same class, had an eight-year-old and an 80-year-old, which uh, was really fun and, and challenging at the same time. Uh, we taught keyboard, guitar, brass, voice and general music, which was all requested by the Guyanese people. As, as a Christian missionary, as, a, as an American going into another country, uh, I, we always want to be wary of going in and saying, here's what you like, here's what you would, would want, uh, but instead we brought to them what they wanted. Uh, while we were down there being two boys, uh, they said, well, who's going to take care of you? Said, oh. said, we could do that. We could cook. We could clean. That's, that's not a problem. They said, oh, that's funny. That's cute. Uh, we'll send someone out to help you cook. 
And, and so uh, about once a week we got cooking lessons from uh, various Lutherans in Guyana. You can see that's one of them up there uh, teaching us how to make roti chicken uh, or curry chicken that goes with roti. Uh, next to it is my favorite food. That is called bake. Uh, it's a deep fried kind of sweet dough that you fill with anything from curry chicken to fish to peanut butter and jelly. It is uh, very delicious. While we were down there, we also got to experience their culture uh, and see the sights. We went to uh, my, my first ever cricket match. Uh, we stayed for five hours and I, I knew what was going on for about half an hour. And uh, <laughs> I'm a, I follow baseball. I thought that was going to help me. Uh, and then we also got to see Kaicher Falls, which was, which was really a blessing because a lot of Guyanese don't have the opportunity to get to see their, their most prized natural landmark. Uh, while we were in New Amsterdam, we held a final concert. Uh, as an Oli, we have our Christmas festival tradition ingrained in us, and we thought, well, what better way to celebrate the end of our trip uh, in New Amsterdam th than to hold a Christmas fest-style concert? which meant we weren't singing Christmas hymns in the summertime. Uh, what it meant was we had all the choirs come together, they each sang a solo uh, offering, and then they came together and sang four large chorus numbers at the end. And it was a 120-person choir singing songs that they had learned uh, to read the music of. They had learned uh, brand new works that they had never heard before. And they also learned about singing in round, singing in, in harmony, and, and uh, a lot of other things that we did that trip. So it was, it was a really meaningful trip for us and for them. And at the end of it, we said, we got to keep going. What, how can we stop here? If we believe in the power of music education and the power of God working through us, how can we stop this? And, and we also wanted to share it with more Guyanese people, and we wanted to share it with more Americans. We thought, we are so changed from this experience. How can we leave this? So at the end of our trip, Michael and I started brainstorming, and we said, why don't we just start a, a music school? Little did we know how much work that would be, but we thought that's a great idea. So our final uh, week in town, we presented it to the Lutheran Church. We said, we would love through, through partnership with you and through the help of our, our friends in the United States to open up a school of music. And they graciously accepted, and I frantically went back and started learning what it meant to open an international school of music. So, let me tell you a little bit about this academy. Uh, the ELCG in Guyana donated a building to us, which is an incredible donation. That's the, the Lutheran National offices that you see there on the bottom floor, and the top floor are these two big classrooms that they donated to our school. They also donated housing for the teachers, uh, and, and, and the cost of, of utilities, which is a, a huge donation for us. Uh, our class sizes, in comparison to what Michael and I taught, which was 30 people a class, three people per keyboard, five per guitar, uh, we, we are now having smaller class sizes. We will have one instrument per person, and we will have two teachers per class. So if you know anything about public school ratios here in, in the States, we'll have two teachers per 15 students, which is exciting. Uh, we will be teaching Guyanese folk music. We are in partnership uh, soon, hopefully, with uh, an organization called Harpy Eagle Music Foundation that is uh, currently in the rainforest documenting native Guyanese music, a lot like what we would think of uh, Native American music being for us. And, and they uh, are interested and do this on a regular basis. They go into schools and teach that music. So we're hoping that we're going to get them to come into our school and, and really share that culture with our students. Uh, and on the weekends, we're going to be teaching vocational classes. Instead of learning keyboard and guitar and going home and saying, oh, that's a, that's a great thing that I can do, isn't that fun, and then be done with it, we're teaching them, how can you share this with your community? How can you play at church? How can you play in schools? Uh, how can you form a band with your friends? Uh, so they can immediately start sharing and giving back uh, with music in their community. Um, I'd like to tell a story about two of our students. Uh, this is Dimitri and Denicia, uh, which you see up there. They're brother and sister. Uh, Denicia was six when we taught her, and Dimitri was 12. 
And these were two students who were dropped off uh, on motorcycle at our school. And uh, they came in and said, hey, could, could we learn keyboard? And we said, of course, take a seat. And, and soon, uh, about two weeks into the, the teaching experience, they started helping us with everything. They said, what can we do to help you get set up? And, and can we help in any way after class? And they would stay late and come early and just sit and talk to us. And, and the maturity level of these two was just, it was incredible to see in such young age. Um, I was so excited to share with their parents at the end of our experience my, the, the boastful teacher of how much music they've learned and how great of students they were. And I walked up to their mom and dad and I said, you must be Dimitri and Denisia's parents. And they said, what have you been teaching our kids? Uh, music. We've been teaching them music. And she said, they're doing all of their chores at home. They're, helping, they're doing their homework. Dimitri's helping Denisia with hers. They've never been so helpful. They've never been so respectful. And all they can do is think about music class. And I was, I was very humbled by that. And I said, well, they're good at music too. And I realized maybe one of the most important things that we can do as music educators is not teach them only music, but, but teach them life skills, teach them community building skills and, and uh, cognitive development that can go far beyond what they can learn in books and, and, and learn um, through school. So our school uh, is based on a model uh, invented by a guy named Gustavo Dudamel who came out of Venezuela, uh, out of El Sistema, if you've heard of that, that program before. And he calls uh, music education an engine for social change. And, and I've never heard it worded better. Uh, we talk about the power of music all the time. We talk about the good things that it can do for us, the, the good things it can do for our mind that nothing else can do. And uh, one of the big things that, that, that we do talk about is compassion and community teaching people how to work together, how to, how to be a part of a team, uh, and, and how to feel empathy towards one another. Uh, we talk about the, the huge analytical and problem-solving skills that they, that they learn. Uh, this is actually a video that if the audio, it sounds like it's working because I keep stepping on the cable. Uh, but I'm going to play you a video. This is how we taught them to, to read sheet music. And you can already see their, their analytical still skills going to work in this. <laughs> Let me explain one thing, because they're going to be saying yo, hey, and moo, and this wouldn't make sense unless I say this. Uh, we taught them to read quarter note, half notes, and whole notes by teaching them greetings that we had heard on the street very often. Yo, which is something we say here, hey, for the, the longer half note. And because their cattle are not kept in, in uh, barns and in fences, I'm a city boy, I don't even know what we do here with cattle. But there, they keep them uh, on the street, and they will cross streets like cars do. So we ran into many cows that would greet us as well. Now that you know that, here we go. As, that's Michael teaching. And, and right after that, we would transition to them saying yo. And then right after that, we transitioned to them reading sheet music, reading a hymn from, uh, from a hymnal, reading um, uh, what, survey, uh, what Surveys the Wondrous Cross. Uh, and and uh, it was a really powerful experience for us, and it was really fun to get to share that with them. Uh, another thing that it teaches is discipline and cooperation. We were able to work with a really rowdy bunch of seventh graders. You can see a picture of some of them there. We worked with 110 of them. Uh, not at the same time, thank, thank the Lord, but uh, we did teach 35 at a time. And at the end of our experience, we brought them together and, and um, did this performance. And what you'll see here is every time they say a word that starts with a B, they have to stand up or sit down. This your last chance. Last chance to do this. You ready? Don't get tricked. My vinyl is over the ocean. My vinyl is over the sea. My vinyl is over the sea. So bring back my body to me. No bees there. I'm not going to say what it would be if there were bees there. Here we go. Ready? My
You can see there was a, a news station there at the time uh, videotaping as well. Uh, and one of the last things that, that I'll mention about, about the power of music in us is the pursuit of beauty, uh, which is something that maybe I take for granted very often, the, the ability to get to create art on a regular basis and, and to pursue uh, beauty on this earth in, in a way that, that is indescribable. Um, this year's goals for us to get this school open uh, will be to continue to develop our, our nonprofit organization here in the States. Uh, we need to fundraise approximately $140,000, which will include uh, renovation of the buildings uh, in Guyana. It will include buying instruments uh, and, then, and then living expenses for our teachers, for myself, and uh, any other program expenses that we, we incur in the first couple years. Uh, I also need to recruit four teachers. I'll be traveling to colleges across the Midwest and, and hopefully down here as well. This is my first time to the South and I would like to return. I can call this the South, right? Okay. I'm a, I'm a Minneapolis boy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and we also will design the curriculum with the help of St. Olaf faculty uh, for the 10 classes. We'll divide it by age, so we'll be teaching, again, what they want to learn. Keyboard, guitar, brass, uh, voice lessons, and we'll be teaching drum set, because all the cool churches have drum sets down there. Which, as a, as a music student, as an ELCA born and bred Lutheran, uh, I am still very by the hymnal and love my four-part hymn harmony. And when I hear a drum set in church, it's, it's good. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> and we'll share that with them down there as well. Um, and then we also will raise awareness in Guyana. We'll recruit uh, students in Guyana to, to prepare uh, for the opening of the academy. Uh, it, this is just a, a little thing. If you, if you ever want to talk to me after this, if you want to come up and ask me questions, or if you want to email me or call me, uh, please do. I, I feel such a, a thankfulness towards this congregation for all the work that, that you have done in this and uh, for all the work that you will continue to do with it. So please, at any time, feel free to contact me uh, or, or be in touch. Uh, in the story uh, of, of God... Uh, seeking, uh, or the, the shepherd seeking the, the one lost sheep. We, we sometimes think in mission work that, that I, my position is the shepherd. And, and after thinking about this, I always felt that I was a sheep going to look for other sheep. And on this trip, I think that was the first time that I had felt that I was found, and that I had found my purpose, that I had found my calling with God. And, and I'm so thankful that you shared that with me, that, that I can share that with others. Uh, here in this country and, and in Guyana. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for being a restorative and ever hopeful God. Thank you for leaving the 99 and seeking us out by name. Please continue to grant us the courage and strength to do the same. Thank you so much for the gifts that you have entrusted in us and for the opportunity to share those with others. Please guide us in using our gifts and our talents, and let us remember that without you, none of this is possible. In your name we pray. Amen.